there's something special about these moments when I get to say this to you. So let me just rejoice in it for a little minute. High society is really, really good. So let me tell you about it. In high society, you will be the creme de la creme, the brulee de la brulee. You'll strap a sock full of cash and you'll have a big need to blow it. In this game of twits being twats, your objective is to have the best stuff, such as a piece of art, a boat, or a sense of meaning in this wasteful existence. One of those was a lie. Let's talk about this game's theme. Because the easiest thing would be to say, this game is, is just numbers, so it does not have theme. High Society comes from Dr. Rainer Knizia, a man often accused of themeless designs and occasionally referred to as the good doctor. No, not that one. Anyway, he quit his job as an investment banker and then proceeded to design over 600 board games, try to contemplate that number, and, of course, he gleefully wears a bow tie. Now, you tell me that this man does not have whimsy. In this game, your goal is simple. Collect cards that represent the various wanton objects that rich people buy to make themselves feel better about their status, and if, at the end of the game, you have the most points printed on these cards, you win! The cup of tea here is to represent winning, because I live in England? Realistically, this is where the fun ends and a mathematical puzzle begins. Each of you has a hand of cards that represents money, and each round you will reveal a new fancy object that you will be all fighting for in an auction. If it's your turn, you can bid any amount of money that you like with as many cards as you wish, as long as it is higher than the previous bid, or you get to pass taking all the money you've bid for back into your hand and being very, very grateful. Because, and here's the thing, if you are the person with the least money at the end of the game, that's sayonara because you are a bum amongst lords and you have lost the game. And all sense of perspective. By the way, I've explained all of the rules to this game, which is an NPI first and probably makes it the lightest game we have ever covered. What I love about High Society is that it's a game from 1995, so it predates most modern board games, but its sense of purchasing is more accurate than modern board games and more representative of real life. Let me show you what I mean with an illustrated example. In most games, you make a decision to buy something, you spend the money on it, and then you are Happy. In this game, however, you decide to buy something, you blow your budget out of the water, and then you go... It's, it's like having fees! Let's look at some of the things you can buy in this game. This is an object of art, aka seven points. I find this so funny because it's not even... You're not buying a Rembrandt or a Basquiat or Duchamp's fountain. You're just buying seven points and you might say that doesn't feel very thematic but that is exactly the point because from the perspective of the character you play in this game well to them it doesn't even matter what matters is to have and to buy and how many arbitrary high society points this thing gives you and of course not to overspend but since everyone on the table is playing the same game not overspending becomes impossible? Let's say that everyone on your table agrees that one point is worth about 3,000 francs. Great, the game begins, somebody flips the top card, and oh my god, it's 10 points. Your first instinct is, I must buy this. Your second instinct, and one you absolutely promise yourself you'll keep to, do you know what? No, everyone's going to want to win this, so I'm not going to try and win it, I'm just going to raise the price with a few careful bids. So you start bidding high, putting down a 20, your first opponent is not messing around and raises it to 25. Second opponent quickly ups the bid to 30, and then you realize that you cannot let them have it for 30. So you put down 32, it eventually comes back around to you at 35, and then you think to yourself, if I just bid a little bit more. Oh no. Eventually, you buy it for 43, which is 
too much. And that's like half the cards from your hand as well. And since you can't make change, that's another resource gone. It's obviously a terrible mistake. But wait till we flip the next card. Okay, so I lied. I haven't actually explained all of the rules to the game, but that's because I wanted to keep these three cards as a surprise. Because when you play the game, even though you know they're in the deck, they still feel like a surprise when you draw them. A horrible, horrible surprise. Like winning a holiday to Tahiti, only to find out you're gonna have to share your beach hut with Nigel Farage. Three times in a game, a card will be flipped that nobody wants. You could win yourself a wonderful minus five points, be forced to discard one of your good cards, or literally half your score at the end of the game, which is devastating. Okay, so why bid for any of these? Because when you draw these cards, the auction is turned upside down. This isn't really working, I'm just gonna go. Now each person begrudgingly bids money not to take this card and everyone's bids will be collected at the end of the round and they will lose that money apart from the one person who passes. They get to put their money back into the hand and they get to take good old Nige home. What a treat. Let's review the situation. You spent 43 money on this 10 points, which is great, it's a lot of points, but this full park card came out and then you would have to bid at least another 25 not to take the full park, which would make you immediately discard the 10 points. And by the way, 65 is more than half the money you have in this entire game, so you got like, I can't afford that, and you, you, you decide to not pay and take the full power, which makes you discard the 10, and you've just spent 43 money for nothing, and you thought being rich was easy. I mean, if you think that being bad at this game exposes greed and overambition, then I have good news for you, because being good at this game also exposes greed and overambition, because you can be patient, conservative, never overspend, and just be very sensible, and then you'll find out at the end of the game that you're losing because you simply haven't bought enough. I'm sorry about the banana, I'm just, this game makes me really happy. High Society is never really a game about math, even though all this game is, it's numbers. It's about finding a balance between greed and impulse control. It's about riding that razor blade edge of frivolity. It's about looking your opponents in the eyes and asking them, if I press the self-destruct button, will you press an even bigger one. And let's, for a second, take a moment to appreciate the art in this new edition from Medusa Dollmaker, because the original version looked like this. And I guess this video needs no conclusion, because obviously we're gonna go and tell you to buy High Society, except that maybe we won't. Here's the thing, I am over the moon in love with High Society, but unlike other auction games and unlike other Rider Knizia auction games like Ra and Modern Art, there is nothing in High Society that isn't an auction. There's no other mechanism stringing it together and giving someone who doesn't necessarily enjoy auction games that space to enjoy other gamey elements. This is just pure auction. So if you don't like auction games, you are not going to enjoy high society and it's not going to change your mind. But if you don't mind them, this is, this is just, this is the best. Actually, it's going once, going twice and sold to the person who's hit the subscribe button. You see what I did? It's a YouTube thing because I had to somehow introduce the subscribe to the entire thematically I'm not sure it's working, but it's all right, because what you need to do is not just hit the subscribe button, but, you, but if you're going to UK Games Export, you need to come to our show. It's the last time we are plugging in on this channel, apart from one more time in tomorrow. Just wait for it, it's fine. But we want to spoil the penultimate guest, which is actual lol's John Perkins. So, so far we have Tom Vassell, Richard Hamm, semi comic, and John Perkins from actual lol. If that's not a star-studded lineup, I don't know what is. You should come to our show. It's going to be a musical show. There's going to be songs. It's going to be absolutely terrible, and you're going to have a laugh. Saturday, UK Games Expo, Tootsuite, 9 p.m. 
I'll see you there.